Welcome to Baru Art. I am Brian and I am really excited to share a new video with you. We're going to look at some really cool effects that you can use in your own art using ink and bubbles. I think it's super fun. It's always surprising and I think it's a great way to get out of a stale routine and you can use these and similar techniques with your favorite media. You know if it's pencil, paints, I'll even show you one in charcoal. You can get some really beautiful and interesting effects this way. And you can use these in your art to give it a, a different dimension. In this video, we're going to look at a few different ways we can apply these bubbles in ink, how we can use it in our artwork, and a couple cautionary tales. So let's gather up some materials so we can do some of this cool stuff. Uh, we'll need some paper. Probably watercolor paper will be best. We'll need some water, of course. Uh, we'll also need some dish soap. Some people call it washing up liquid. Uh, we'll need some glycerin, and that is the secret to big bubbles. Uh, we'll also need some ink, some water-soluble ink. Indie ink works well. And some masking fluid if you want to try that out. Uh, you can use Frisket, crayon, or even some masking tape. One method is to use foamy bubbles. We'll start out using some water and some dish soap, as we saw there. And we're not going to add glycerin to this one. And I found that the best way to get really tiny bubbles is to use a little whisk, like I'm doing here. And, um, you know, kind of pretend like you're making a meringue or something. None of this stuff is an exact science. Um, I'm telling you what's worked for me, but if something else works better for you, by all means do it. Experimenting is your friend. So in this example, you'll see that I have this foamy bubble concoction, and I'm just going to kind of put that on there with a spatula, but you can use whatever will work for you. The way that I'm doing this is not exact at all. I'm just kind of throwing the stuff on there. There may be a way of putting the bubbles exactly where you want them. Um, let me know how to do that if you if you figured out that method. Um, and here I've added some India ink, and I'm just going to drop that right on the other bubbles there on the paper. Uh, I don't have a particular thing in mind when I'm doing this. I'm kind of letting chance and nature just do its thing, and I am going to use what it gives me to create something afterwards. So you can also add ink directly to the foam itself and it will find its way down to the paper. And one additional thing you could do is use a straw and kind of blow the bubbles around. This way you can kind of influence the shape of the ink on the paper. And after you set that aside to dry you'll end up with kind of an interesting blob that you can do something with. So what I did is took a look at this blob and I'm seeing a face. I'm seeing a hat. I'm seeing something. And so I'm just using that as a basis for drawing something on top of it. So it's a little bit like looking at clouds in the sky and saying, oh, that kind of looks like this or that and just taking it to the next level, making it a little bit more concrete. So you can see I'm using some colored pencils to bring out this face. I think it may be, he's a, maybe some sort of mage or wise man. I thought maybe he was a jester, I, I don't know. But he's got this interesting little hat on and I'm gonna bring out his face and this kind of an interesting little drawing that came out of a bunch of bubbly blobs. I will say that with this method, sometimes the bubbles are so small you can barely see them, but it usually lends a little bit of a texture to it, and you'll see when we get down to this guy's, uh, I guess his clothes, uh, it does add an interesting little texture. I had fun adding a little orb Maybe a crystal ball or something? Not sure. But um, kind of adds that mystic look to it. 
and you'll see there in the bottom right when I'm working on his clothes those little bubbles kind of added a certain pattern to his clothes. I think it looks kind of cool. But a lot of times when we're thinking about bubbles, we're thinking about bigger bubbles. And so one way that I found to do this is to also use the water and the dish soap. But I found in order to get the bigger bubbles, I've added uh, one ingredient, and that is glycerin. And if you add glycerin to these bubbles, you'll be able to make them a little bit bigger and... Um, they seem to be a little bit more sturdy. And if you like, you can add um, ink directly to this mixture. I find that if you do this and you let the bubbles kind of land on the paper, it'll kind of have a light sort of wash of a bubbly sort of texture. And I'm just using a straw and blowing through that straw and I'm getting these huge bubbles and those bubbles will move around and pop and eventually leave you with a neat design. Uh, another way is to do the same thing, but just blow the bubbles and then add the ink after you've put that on the paper. It's kind of fun watching this all happen. Once you have these bubbles on the paper, you can take a little dropper of ink. Uh, I'm using uh, India ink, and you'll just watch this stuff kind of find its way through the little bubbles, you know, through the sides mostly, and end up on uh, on the paper with an interesting little pattern. Uh, I'm also using a different ink here. This is an acrylic ink, had a different color to it. You can use all sorts of uh, different concoctions. You can probably even use watercolors. Um, you can use alcohol inks as well. I found that they don't spread out very well though. Uh, they tend to get absorbed by the paper very quickly and don't really leave much of a bubble pattern. But, you know, it's something to experiment with. Another application technique is to use a masking fluid, uh, also known as frisket. And what this will do is to create an area where the bubbles can't stain the paper. And you can use anything to mask, even tape or crayons or something else that would be a resist. The paper that I used for these experiments probably wasn't the best paper to use. I didn't use a nice watercolor paper. Uh, this was uh, printmaking paper and it didn't absorb very well, but for demonstration purposes I think it did just fine. On earlier pieces, I used a better paper, and here's one. Uh, and I tried to use masking tape as a resist or as a mask. Uh, that didn't work out real, real well, unfortunately. Uh, it was wet enough that it got underneath the tape, and the edges were really fuzzy. But if there's a will, there's a way. So I just got out my trusty X-Acto knife and cut out the pieces that had the masking tape and ended up with a kind of a cool look. I love the look of these rusty bubbles next to the flat, pure turquoise. I love that. This is another drawing that I didn't have uh, an end goal in mind. In fact, this is how I got onto the whole bubble thing to start with. I had drawn this portrait and was intentionally leaving a lot of it blank and obscured. I don't know why, it's just something that came to my head. And I thought I'd put some sort of background on it. And cautionary tale number one. I covered the color pencil drawing with frisket, uh, with this masking fluid. And I did a pretty complete job, got most of it. The problem is, and you will see later, that when I took this stuff off, it also took off a lot of the color pencil. So it got washed out and I had to go back and add the color pencil back in that I took out. So probably not the best idea to use 
uh, frisk it on top of colored pencil. You can see here as I'm taking that stuff up, I'm taking up all of that colored pencil. <laughs> it did leave some of it. It wasn't a complete disaster, but it sure was annoying um, going back and resaturating all the areas that I had worked so hard at getting the right kind of colors and tones and values. So that's why experiments are kind of cool. You learn things. Sometimes it's good stuff and sometimes you learn how to avoid certain things. So I use these bubbles as a background texture. Um, since I was getting back into the colored pencils to fix the masking fluid fiasco, I decided to use the colored pencils also on the background, on the little bubbles, and kind of draw attention to their shape and uh, that texture. And it ended up kind of looking to me like like stone, uh, maybe a, like a terrazzo type thing. Uh, all these little different colors, maybe gems or something. And I think overall kind of gave it an interesting look that's not too distracting, but is still somewhat interesting. So that was cautionary tale number one. How about number two? Always put the lid back on your ink. As I was filming, I knocked this one ounce bottle of ink onto my carpet. I did get most of it out, but not 100%. We can also use these big bubbles as part of the overall texture, going ahead and using it as part of the foreground. I struggled with what to do with this one for a while. Uh, I really like the bubble pattern a lot. I think it is very striking. But that one red blob down at the bottom, that was some alcohol ink. And you can see how it didn't spread out. I didn't know what to do with this that would make that make sense. The more I looked at it, I saw that I could do a face in there. And hopefully the red could be arranged in such a way that it would be around where the mouth should be. I wasn't sure if it would work or not. But I gave it a shot. In the end, I think the charcoal worked really, really well with the India ink. The really dark blacks and the gradations from basically from white to black, I think they really lend themselves well with the bubbles, which also have those tonal values in the same sort of uh, black and gray palette. So everything just kind of fits in together, I think, pretty well. And as I usually do with charcoal, there's a lot of pushing and pulling with adding the charcoal and taking it away, um, you know, using the brush to kind of smooth out some of the edges and distribute the charcoal around. I think that the bubble texture, you know, perhaps like on her forehead, almost looks like a dappled sunlight sort of thing. Um, that's maybe one advantage of having this in the foreground on this particular one. And the red on the lips ended up looking okay, I think. This ended up probably being my favorite of this lot of drawings of the Bubble series. Um, hopefully you like it too. Do let me know if you try out any of these methods yourself, or if you have another method, let me know about it. I'm always interested in learning. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you've made it this far, consider subscribing. It helps me to continue to make these uh, for an audience that appreciates the work. And uh, I thank you very, very much for tuning in. I really appreciate everyone that stops by to take a look at these videos. I hope everyone has a great rest of the week. And I should be back next week with another video. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll see you later.